Wherefore? Part 20. It definitely isn't a date. They have both said this more than once. However, there is some sort of history talk on at Lansdowne Hall and both Amy and Clarissa are into things historical. But it definitely isn't a date. Whether it is history is another question, but the rest of the audience are engrossed and taking it seriously. The main speaker is taking it very seriously. St Eardwolf, age 12 to age 62, was rumoured to be the son of a wealthy Eorderman. Eardwolf seems to have taken a vow of poverty and lived most of his life as a hermit in a gap in a hedge in the parish of Ditchley, later to be called Ditchlouse. His diet seems to have consisted largely of peas, pottage and beetroot wine provided by the parishioners. In return for such provender, he would arbitrate in religious disputes such as concerning how many heads the great beast, ridden by the whore of Babylon, possessed. He would undertake to cure oxen of measles by laying on of hands. When villagers pointed out that oxen do not get measles, he cited this as evidence that his cure worked. Notable miracles performed by the saint include the miracle of the peas, namely the resurrection of nine peas, whole and new, from a cauldron of peas pottage, wherein they had lain and been thoroughly mashed for nine days and nights. With the miracle of the nine shrews, Eardwolf reportedly caused nine shrews to sing, or rather squeak, hymns unto the Lord. A somewhat limited miracle as his efforts to persuade them to accompany themselves on pipe and tabor failed. Eardwolf was martyred by the Danes on his 50th birthday ostensibly because he refused or possibly failed to reproduce the miracle of the shrews for their entertainment. They pelted him with vegetables with such great force and might that an onion did penetrate his brain and thus he was most grievously slain. His feast day is the third Thursday after the second Sunday after the end of Lent, known as Shrew Thursday. Traditionally, a breakfast of peas, pottage, an onion and beetroot wine would be eaten in commemoration of this most holy man. Followers of the saint would also fix a pea pod to their hats and squeak the Lord's Prayer in imitation of the miracle of the shrews. Clarissa put up a hand. Was Eardwolf of Wessex, East Angles or Mercia? That is indeed a question, the speaker replies. I think Eardwolf was a, Sa oh, a Wessex man, but opinions vary. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle gives us nothing definitive on the subject. Someone else raises a hand and when allowed to speak, stands up and shouts, Eardwolf! Eardwolf! Hermit in the hedge! Resurrection! Our peas! Make the shrews sing blessed hymns. Eardwolf, beloved beetroot, wine quaffer of the Almighty's bosom. There was a small round of applause and that appears to mark the end of the evening. Amy is surprised, not having realised there was any local interest in local saints, or any local saints for that matter. Clarissa is clearly involved with this scene already and greets a few people during the milling about not quite ready to leave yet part of the evening. Only when they are out of the building does Clarissa lean in and say, they didn't get into the interesting stuff. I'm disappointed. What do you mean? Amy asks, cautiously. Well, the shrewism heresy for a start. In the 900s, a breakaway set of Eardwolf followers maintained that he actually resurrected nine shrews from a cauldron of peas pottage and taught nine peas to sing hymns, and gained much support amongst the villains until being brutally suppressed by Athelstan. How do you know all this? Amy asks. She has never encountered anything like it before. You have to go to the right school, I think, Clarissa says. I went to the local Steiner. Amy says. Figures. Far too mainstream for my family, let me tell you. Amy finds Clarissa's enthusiasm interesting. Also, she is not ready to go home, so she asks if there is any more Eardwolf stuff that she should know about. 
Clarissa is only too happy to oblige, and so they sit in bank gardens with a backdrop of circus kids and casual drugs use, and Clarissa talks about the saint. The heresy trials went like this. Athelstan. That is ridiculous. Shrews do not feature in the recipe for peas pottage. Shrewers and heretic. Not officially, but anything remotely tasty went into the pot in those days, and still does. Athelstan. Anyway, peas can't sing. Answer that. Shrewers and heretic. Normally they can't, but these did, and that's what makes it such a miracle. Athelstan. Heresy, heresy, to the stake with you. Ex-shrewism heretic. I've changed my mind. The shrews sang. The peas didn't. Athelstan. Too late now. We've piled up the wood and sent out the invitations. By which point Amy is crying with laughter. Then actually crying. Then laughing like a maniac. She's picked a good location. Anyone in earshot will assume she's having a more complicated than average acid trip and will leave her to it. My family are all shrewism heretics, says Clarissa. But there aren't so many followers of Eardwolf these days, so we tend to stick together even when we disagree. I guess burning heretics is out of vogue, Amy says. Quite. Although I hear it still happens in Nailsworth sometimes. Clarissa is deadpan. Amy likes that she doesn't know if this is a joke or serious. Finding weirdness that is not inside her in some way is strangely comforting. <laughs>